So remember this, guys. Right? The longer the tenure for the loan usually means that the lower your mortgage is, and this usually results in a positive cash flow. Hi guys, I'm Jermaine and I'm Sean and we are the co-founders of iQuadrant in our series of videos we'll be sharing with you guys property investment knowledge, strategies and tips and in this video we are going to share with you one of the five criteria to select a good industrial property for investment So today we'll be focusing a lot into Tano so what is tenure? Tenure is the remaining lease of the land. As an investor, we want to make sure that our tenure is the longest possible. So just to give you guys a context, in Singapore, right, the longest tenure that the banks actually give is actually 25 years for industrial property. How most banks actually calculate loan tenure for you is basically they take the remaining lease of the land minus 5 years, alright? And most banks actually give 25 years loan tenure. So remember this guys, right? the longer the tenure for the loan usually means that the lower your mortgage is and this usually results in a positive cash flow. Yeah, so what we want is we want to ensure that rent minus the mortgage minus your miscellaneous expenses, market expenses and this gives you as high of a positive cash flow as possible. This is really important because there are many situations right? when you buy an industrial property, most of the leases right, is way below 30. Yeah. So what does this mean? This means that let's say if you buy something of 20 years leasehold, Minus five years, we were only able to get fifteen, 15 years loan yeah. tenure, mm -hmm. right? And by doing that, right, this just means that your mortgage is usually high, Higher. and most of the time your rental, right, hardly probably ever covers the mortgage itself. And so, Sean, like also being a business owner, right, if I can actually rent at the same price or a lower price than what I pay on my mortgage, then it doesn't make sense for a business owner to actually buy this industrial property anymore, right? Yeah, it doesn't make sense, all right, because of the fact that number one, that this business owner the most likely not exit this business, yeah. right? Sorry, not exit this property, right? And by doing that, they're unable to take back their down payment, right? So why would any business owner want to put 10 or 20% of the unit price as down payment, right? And at the same time, just pay the exact same mortgage as a rent. No business owner will ever do that. Mm, yeah. That's right. That's why the golden number, guys, is minimally 33 years tenure. That is one of the five criteria that we actually share in our community and all of our properties are above the 33-year tenure. Of course, guys, if you can actually get a property that has a longer runway, like a longer tenure as well, 40 years, 50 years, good for you. Go ahead as well. Yeah, so why specifically 33 years, right? Yeah. Because in Singapore, we have this thing called seller stamp duty, right? Oh, yeah. And there is seller stamp duty for three years. Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? There is no longer a gone on the days where you buy this property and you're going to flip, flip it, it the very it, next day, it. right? Mm -hmm. So when we buy into any industrial property, we need to be prepared to hold it for a minimum of three years. Mm -hmm. So using a 33 years minimum tenure mm -hmm. minus a three years holding period 30 yeah minus another five years which the bank criteria to minus it off 25 right? years so at 25 years means that we are actually taking care of the next investor or the next buyer so they're buying this in the next buyer in mind right mm -hmm. so ensure that we are able to exit this particular property itself yeah so of course as i mentioned the longer the better but it will come to a point where the longer tenure doesn't make sense already and that is where the freehold industrial property comes in at all and and also right i mean think about it guys as a Tenant, today let's wear a hat of a tenant. Okay, we are all tenants right now. So do we actually care whether like a building is a freehold building or a leasehold building? We don't. And in fact, what the tenant really cares about is really what is the rental and how the inside of my unit looks nice. If it looks good, looks not too bad, then okay, all right, I'll be willing to rent it at a lower pricing than, you know, somewhere in the CBD area. So that is very important as an investor to wear different hats. Exactly right. So in this scenario, all right, it's just a Imagine this, right? You come to a point where, let's say, for example, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 10, all right? mm -hmm. we just can really expect that the price is naturally more expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and if you hit into freehold status, right? Some I mean, about yeah, a thousand, just, yeah, thousand PSF, 800 sure. to even a thousand yeah. PSF is mm -hmm. pretty common, right? Mm -hmm. And that is where the leasehold, no, sorry, the mortgage, right? Most likely will be way higher than the rental. That just ensures that this means that you're going to have a very weak holding power in case of any crisis. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't make sense, right, for anyone to really go and buy the freehold property because a lot of times these freehold properties cost a lot of money. The quantum is quite huge, close to a million dollars. Uh, but at the same time, they need to put down the 20% down payment and every single month after getting it rented and minusing out their mortgage and their miscellaneous expenses, they still have to top up from their own pocket 
2,000 over dollars every single month and I think that that doesn't make sense and with a weaker rental tenants don't care right they all pay similar price whether it is freehold or leasehold then I think that you know with a higher negative cash flow the buyer pool will shrink significantly because why would somebody want to put down a down payment and every single month have to still cough up a huge negative cash flow and this is looking from a lens of a retail investor. Of yeah. course, I mean, if you're a business owner and you're using that for your own business use mm -hmm. or free real property and you're okay to pay that mortgage, I think that's fine. But as a retail investor, we want to ensure that we have some form of holding power. So there are some industrial properties that are left with a lease of 40 to 50 years with positive cash flow. And the good thing about these is there are opportunities in there for us as investors because even in a scenario whereby we don't sell, we hold it all the way till the lease goes to zero, we return back the land to the government and we don't cash out on our profits or some of our profits over there as well, right? We still make a good 6 to 10% returns per year depending on how you maximize your rental. And the interesting thing is this, is that now all new launches for industrial property is only 30 or 20 years leasehold. And because of the fact that now, right, when most buyers buy into these properties today, right, their mortgage is so much higher as compared to what the rent they can call it, like, it just makes these older properties a lot more attractive. Imagine those 40 or 50 years yeah. leasehold versus these 20 years leasehold, yeah. right, the tenants are still going to pay the same rental. Obviously, this 30, for the 40 50 years leasehold is going to be a lot more attractive yeah. for retail investors. And I think that that is the opportunity for us as investors to actually make good amount of profits and also um, see through the whole investment as well. Yeah, and this actually results in a slight capital appreciation for these older properties itself, just for the fact that they're decaying or basic depreciation for these so-called 20 to 30 years this whole is, is, is as such. Yeah, so I think it took us quite a while as well as investors ourselves. It also took us a while to navigate around the whole industrial property because there were not a lot of information out there as well. And so as we grew um, with our industrial portfolio, I think that all these things were, some of them were actually our past mistakes as well. So we hope that you actually enjoyed this video and received some good value and understanding tenure as well. So again, we are going to summarize. Even though our past transaction for our industrial property we managed to achieve some capital appreciation when we sold it, right? as industrial investors, we do not put on the optimism for capital appreciation because the majority of our profits actually come from principal pay and positive cash flow which we will be sharing in our future videos. So guys, the golden number is 33 years tenure and if you can get a longer one, go ahead. That is really good as well as we shared with you already. So guys, that's it for today. That's it about tenure and this is one of the five criteria when it comes to selecting a good investable grade industrial property. So we hope to see you guys in our later videos as well. We'll be adding more value, sharing with you guys more educational content with regards to property investment. That's all guys. See you. Bye.